Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. It's a snowy Monday morning. We're not here because of the coronavirus and also the snow day, a double whammy. Unfortunately, the ski resorts are closed as well. So I'm here doing IB Math SL Part 1. We're currently in Chapter 11. Today I was going to go over page 493, uh, numbers 1 through 12, law of sines, law of cosines. So that's what we're doing here. I'm here with my dog and my daughter. <laughs> Getting hit with snowballs and trying to do the best I can. All right, I think I'll go back over to my desk and I'll put the camera over my shoulder. I got snow safety first. Laminated overnight on a CNC cut jig. All right, this is math analysis and approaches, IB math book, standard level IB math. We are in chapter 11. Section 11.5, Applications of Right and Non-Right Triangles. So some trigonometry here. I'm just going to do a quick review of non-right triangles and then a few problems from this section. So let me go back a step. If we have a right triangle, that's what we've been doing all along. Right triangle trig is SOHCAHTOA. Sine of any angle is the ratio of the opposite or hypotenuse. Cosine of any angle adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of any angle is the opposite over adjacent. That only works in right triangles. So now we're going to look at non-right triangles. And in non-right triangles, there are two equations. One is the law of sines. And the law of sines is the sine of any angle over the side opposite it is equal to the sine of sine of any other angle over the side opposite it. So one important thing to remember with the law of sines, actually with all trig, is that a capital letter is a measure of an angle. So this angle is A. The side opposite it is also A, but lowercase. Angle B, side opposite it, lowercase b. Angle C, side opposite, lowercase c. So in this equation, there are four variables angle, side, angle, side. So you have to have three of those four. The law of sines will work if you have all of the angles. So if you had an angle, side, angle, triangle, angle, side, angle, you could use it. If one angle is obtuse, you can use it. Obtuse means greater than 90. So if I knew this angle was say 100 degrees, if this angle is 100 degrees, I could use it in a side angle side triangle. Um, or if you know all of the angles, you can use the law of sines. The second equation is the law of cosines. And again, you have to keep track of uppercase and lowercase, but the law of cosines is one side squared equals the other side squared plus the other side squared. Same as a Pythagorean theorem, right? Except I have to take into account it's a non-right triangle. So I go minus two, whatever side this is, whatever side this is, cosine of the angle opposite that side. So cosine of A. So I could write it three ways. Why don't you try and write it the second way? Maybe pause the video here and write it as B squared. So if you have B squared, it's gonna be A squared plus C squared minus two times whatever that is, A, whatever that is, C, cosine of the angle opposite that, cosine of B. And then write it out the third way, pause the video again, and write out the third way, C squared would be equal to A squared plus B squared minus two, whatever that is, A, B, cosine a capital C. Okay, so that's a law of cosines. Again, four variables here, side, 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 and an angle. You have to have three of those pieces to solve for the fourth. So you could use the law of cosines if you have side, 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 and you can find the measure of an angle. Or if you have a side, an angle in between, and another side, you could use it to find the third side of a triangle. 
So that's the overview of non-right triangles. One more little piece. Area of a triangle is equal to one-half AB sine of C. And you can write this three ways. Is that focusing? AB sine of C. This is side, angle side. So in triangle ABC right here, it would be this side, this side, sine of this angle here. Side, angle, side. So you could have one-half BC sine of A, one-half AC sine of B. All right, so let's go to this first one. Number one, calculate the area of a triangle with sides 12, 14, and 20. So on number one, if this side were 12, this side were 14, and this side were 20, calculate the area. So I'm gonna have to find an angle first. I'm not drawing a scale, I'm gonna call this angle A. So I'm gonna take the side opposite A, 14 squared is equal to 12 squared plus 20 squared minus two times whatever that is, whatever that is, cosine of the angle opposite the 14, cosine of A. One equation, one variable. I'll use my graphing calculator. First thing I need to do on this graphing calculator is go to mode and make sure I'm in degrees because we're finding measure of angles. So I'm gonna hit enter once it degrees is highlighted and then quit. So I'm trying to isolate this variable A, so I need to do everything in reverse. So the first thing I'm gonna do on my calculator, do you see that screen okay, is go 14 squared. I'm gonna hit minus, or equals, minus, subtract this from both sides, subtract this from both sides, and that's gonna give me negative 348 equals, here, I'll write that out, negative, 348 is equal to negative 2 times 12, 20, cosine of A. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 times 12 times 20. So I take negative 348, takes my answer, negative 348, divided by the quantity negative 2 times 12 times 20, now I have cosine of A equals 0.725. Again, solving for A, I take the inverse cosine of both sides and I get 43.5 degrees. So that's 43.5 degrees. I'll write that down, but I keep that stored in my calculator. And the question is asking me for the area. So the area of this is 1 half 12 20 sine of that 43.5 degrees. So I have that value in my calculator. I take the sine of my answer, so I don't have any rounding errors, 0.688 times 20 times 12 times 0.5, and I get an area 82.65. So my area is 82.65. I don't think they're, yeah, square centimeters. All right, so that's law of cosines, area of a triangle. Let me just jump ahead and do one more problem. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll just do number three. Let's see. So I wouldn't just watch how I do it. I, I would try and do it first on your own. So here's that triangle in the book. This goes here, 50 degrees, 55 degrees. This is 14, this is 11 from here to here. And these are meters. Find the length of P, R. So find this length here. So I need to find this length here. I'm gonna label that A. Um, I have side, angle, side. So I'm use the law of cosines. I'm going to find this side here. So I'm going to go a squared equals 14 squared plus 11 squared minus 2, 14, 11. Cosine of the angle opposite that. So cosine of 55 degrees. This is a little different than the last one. 
because now I'm not isolating a variable. I have my variable here. So I'm going to go from right to left, cosine of 55 equals times 11 equals times 14 equals times a negative 2. I'm going to multiply by a negative 2. Then I'm going to add 11 squared to it. I'm going to add a 14 squared to it. So I get a squared is equal to 140. Square root of each side, a is equal to 11.84. So I have this in here, 11.84. Okay, I redrew this triangle a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. Then I highlighted with the red Sharpie the triangle I'm going to work with. If I could figure out what this angle is, then I could figure out what this angle is here because that'll be its linear pair. So I'm going to try and find this angle. I'm going to take the side opposite it, right? Because I have all three sides in this red triangle, but I don't have this angle theta. That 75 is a large angle. So I'm going to take this angle, the side opposite it, say 14 squared is equal to 11.84 squared plus 11 squared minus 2, whatever this is. No squared there. Cosine, and we'll call this A. This is now on my calculator. Again, in degree mode, I'm going to go 14 squared minus 11.84 squared minus 11 squared divided by the quantity negative 2 times 11.84 times 11 0.25 so cosine of a equals 0.25 take the inverse cosine of both sides and I get 75.5 degrees so this angle here is 75.5 degrees so that means this angle here is a supplement of that so that is 180 180 minus 75.5 104.5 so this is 104 I'm actually just gonna round that to 104 around this to 76 and then this angle here is 104 plus 50 plus that equals 180. So 154 subtracted from 180 is 26 degrees. So now I have all the angles in that triangle and I have one side of 11.84. This is the side I'm trying to find. So I'm gonna say sine of 50 degrees over the side opposite it, 11.84 is equal to the sine of 26 degrees over the side opposite it, we'll call that y. And then I'm going to cross multiply here, sine of 26 times 11.84 is equal to 5.19 that's equal to sine of 50 y. Divide both sides by the sine of 50. And I get y is equal to 6.7. 6.78. The question is, how long is that overall base? So it's going to be that and that, or 17.8 units. So that's part B. Part C is the area. Now this is meters. Part C is find the area. That's a little messy here. It's going to be the area is going to equal one half this length, 17.8 times that length, 14 times the sine of 55 degrees. So we'll do that on my calculator, and that'll be part C. So sine of 55 times 14 times 17.8 times 0.5 gives me an area of 102 square meters. 
All right, well, I hope that helped. These problems aren't easy. You got to do some reasoning, some logic in here. One other little thing I'll put in there as well is parallel lines cut by a transversal. This will also help you figure out um, some of these problems. These lines are congruent because the alternate exterior angles. This is congruent to this, vertical angles. This congruent to this, alternate interior angles. So all four of those angles are congruent. This angle out here is the supplement of that angle or the linear pair. So then if this is 30, this is 150. If that's 150, 150 vertical angles. If that's 150, this is 150 alternate interior angles. And then these are congruent alternate exterior angles. So don't forget linear pairs add up to 180. Uh, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So in a lot of these drawings, you can figure out some of the angles that way. All right, well, hopefully that helped. Thank you for watching.